Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. A few weeks ago, I saw this Commodore 64 for sale online, and it's pretty dirty and disgusting. Any sane person would have passed on it, but I thought, hey, that might make for a fun restoration project. So here it is. I haven't even opened the box yet. Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of scared to look inside. But let's put some gloves on and let's see what we can do. All right, let's open it up. All right, time for the gloves. Okay. Here we get some joysticks. Wow, <laughs> joysticks already are in such dirty shape. There's the power supply. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, this may be beyond repair. Oh, and I see we have this loose running around already. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay, this looks as filthy as it did on the picture online. <laughs> so yeah, I've never seen a Commodore 64 dirtier and more disgusting than this one. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of them. And yeah, I it, it's a combination of things too. This is not painted. This is the color that it became after who knows what, maybe you've been left in the sun for ages, but it's not just in the sun. This was clearly in a very damp place. Look at the manual. I mean, the binding, the metal binding just mm, like disappeared. It just became dust and the pages just fell apart. So if this is how the paper is in the manual, I have a really bad feeling how the electronics inside are going to be. Normally, I open the computers up before cleaning them, but this is really so disgusting that I think I need to wipe it down a little bit, at least, in order to be able to work with it. We'll save the batch for later. This one is way too far gone, but hopefully I can put a replacement one. And let's start using some just generic cleaner. So actually, it may not be that dirty. Maybe the seller even wiped it down a little bit. I mean, yeah, there is some dirt, but I think it's just baked into the case. <laughs> yeah, I think the easy dirt, the seller already removed. Like even this, I thought it was going to come out. Uh, yeah, the keyboard is very dusty, but that doesn't matter. We'll, we'll deal with all the keys later. Oh, and interesting, the difference. This is much more normal. Okay, so a wipe down didn't really do much. I guess it makes me feel a little bit better about touching it. <laughs> All right, I kind of dare to touch it with my bare hands now. So now we're going in. So it's encouraging I'm not seeing a pool of rust in the bottom case. That's something. So what I see is that it has the RF shield. So, ugh. <laughs> I've never seen an RF shield like that. So I wonder if this wasn't a flood. If so, we can say goodbye to the board. All right, the moment of truth. Oh. Well, it's looking better than I feared. <laughs> this right here looks horrible. Wow, and the RF shield itself. Oh my God, you have to see it. Look at that. So it's almost like the worst part of whatever mold or fungus or, or water damage ended up here. Oh, and I see it ended up here as well. But you know what? This board is, it, I, I'm thinking it's, we're going to make it work now. Oh. And how's the underside? Wow. I mean, this part is like new. That's amazing. 
Okay, so let's start with a visual inspection of the board. And I mean, it's not as clean as I thought initially. I think a lot of that, well, actually a lot of that is straight like spider nests and horrible things like that. That might be like the dead spider right there. And some of it could be the RF shield cardboard that decomposed. Ugh, everything flew in there when I said, Phew. <laughs> things are socketed. That's good and bad. I'm thinking that anything that was socketed is going to have to, that we're going to have to remove the socket. Those things go pretty quickly. I see rust in there. And then on this side, we have the switch that looks pretty bad, but it's clear that the first thing I need to do is just brush everything off really well and, and see. Once I get rid of all the spiders, <laughs> then we can see what's really there. This is really rusty for some reason. That must be different metal than this. And the underside looks really good. No rust, nothing, just a little, little dirt in there. Yeah, that looks totally clean. Okay, so let's give it a good brushing and then we'll see what we're up against. Okay, I'm back from brushing this and it looks a lot better, but I'm definitely noticing some problems. You know, we have some rust in there, which we had seen before. So maybe the CIA chips are not good anymore. I have no idea why this is white. It's definitely something that is coating it. So I don't know if that's of animal origin <laughs> or what. And then the switch cleaned up pretty well. But I've seen a couple things of concern. So the back looked really good until you look at this area. So I think these are all traces that are going to the cartridge connector. There's a high density of connectors here. And there's definitely some spots that look corroded. So. I'm going to guess that there are definitely some signals that are not making it through. That's unfortunate. That's the kind of thing that I was most afraid of. And if it's just a few of them, then we can patch them up. But if it's all of those dark spots, I mean, we can patch them up, but there's going to be a lot of them. So yeah, that's going to be an area of concern that we need to check before we do anything else. For how disgusting the case was and how destroyed the manual was, the inside was surprisingly good. I knew that Commodore 64 boards are pretty sturdy, but I was really surprised. Anyway, now I'm going to take out the socketed chips and give the board a good bath. Yeah, what a difference. This is the part that was in the socket and this is the part that was exposed. So at least it's not rusted all the way through. And the socket itself is not as bad as I feared. Hmm. Okay, that's all the socketed chips. Since I'm planning on putting this in the shower, I want to get to that, so at least get an air out. So I think I need to desolder that. And then we really need to do something with that lid anyway. And at the same time, I'm going to desolder this to also restore that. And then I'll desolder this just to get rid of it, because this is just annoying. And there we go. That part is accomplished. And now it's time for a bath. Some people are scared about putting electronics in water like this, and it's totally fine. You just need to make sure to dry it really well so there's no rust and wait until it's completely dry before turning it on. But for now, we're just going to soap it up really well, scrub as much of the grime as we can, and then rinse it and leave it really clean. I'll start by drying it with a hair dryer just to get most of the water out, and then I'll leave the board sit out for at least 24 hours before I power it on again. And back from the shower, this is what it looks like now. And <laughs> this looks so much better. Even all that weird white stuff is gone. So yeah, it feels like we can start working now. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good, the switch. And so the back looks really good in the area that I was most concerned about. I'm still quite concerned about. <laughs> if we're lucky, those traces are going to be fine. And it's just going to be, I don't know, four or five of them. But yeah, I don't know. Apart from that, things look really good, though. Surprisingly good for how the computer was. So let's do the edge connectors now. They're pretty corroded, so I'll go ahead and start with my fiberglass pen. Yeah, what a difference. Even the bottoms are a little corroded. So I'll go ahead and make a pass there as well. And finish off with some isopropyl alcohol. So yeah, the corrosion there is pretty noticeable, but I think that should be enough to make contact. If not, we can try to restore the pads, maybe applying some solder and removing it very carefully, but hopefully this is good enough. And while we wait for the board to dry completely before we power it on, let's focus our attention on the case and the keyboard, which is filthy. <laughs> So just brushing this off made it much, much better. I'm not going to open it up yet. If uh, if the keys work well, then I'll leave it alone. If once we put everything back together, the keys are not working really well, then I'll open this up and try to fix that. But otherwise, I'd rather not open up all those tiny little screws. And sometimes you even have to desolder a couple cables or something. So hopefully it works this way. And now time to give the case a similar treatment to what we did with the board itself hot water and lots of suds. And so this is what it looks like after all that scrubbing and soaping and surprisingly it looks almost the same. This is completely baked in. The case is not in a good place right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try retro brighten it without really any hope of leaving it perfect. I think it's going to lighten up the, the color. I'm afraid it may still leave all those blotches. It may even make it worse, but we have nothing to lose. If that doesn't work, we'll just get creative with it. A trickier question is what to do with the keys. They cleaned up much better. So the keys are actually great. They're totally clean. They're totally fine. They're totally functional, but the tops are much more yellow than the fronts. This is how it's supposed to be, <laughs> not like this. I'm always a little hesitant to immediately retrobright keys, but really these are so brown that we might as well do it at the same time we're doing the case. So as usual, I'll be using 40 volume hydrogen peroxide, the kind that you can find in hair salons. And it's actually too thick to use comfortably the way I like to use it. So I dilute it in water first until we have something about like this. It's actually gonna get thicker over time, but this is perfect to get started. And let's take it out. As you can see, it's not a very sunny day at all. It's slightly overcast and that's perfect for this because the peroxide cream is not going to get too hot and dry out too quickly, but we'll still get all the UV rays that we need. It turns out I didn't turn on the camera when I started applying it, but you get the idea. The way I do it is I apply the peroxide mix all over the case. And then I come back every about 15 minutes or so and reapply it again. I don't cover it with anything because I find it that sometimes it dries out and you don't really see it. So I'm better off coming out every 15 minutes and reapplying it and you know, moistening everything. And let's do the same process with the keys themselves. I don't want them flying around with wind or when I brush them. So I'm going to lay down some strips of duct tape. And then just stick every key to those strips. And now it's just like the case. We apply the peroxide cream and come back every so often to refresh it. For whatever reason, the plastic on the keys themselves is not as delicate as the case. So it doesn't matter if they dry out a little bit. We don't have to be on top of this as much as we have to be with the case. While we have the case soaking up UV rays outside, let's have a look at the keyboard springs, which looked pretty rusty when I took the keys out. 
I noticed that a lot of the springs were kind of rusted and I don't have any spares. So I don't know how superficial this is or how deep the rust goes. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use some anti-rust product like this. Apparently you can leave them there for 10 or 15 minutes and the rust is supposed to just kind of go away. So let's give that a try. There you go, it's kind of foaming. It's doing something. You know, it really is bubbling now. Maybe closing this lid wasn't such a great idea. There you go, that's probably better. <laughs> and while I wait for the springs, I can clean the chips and remove the rust on the legs and then start testing them one at a time on a working Commodore 64. The date and a lot of them seems to be late 1983, so at least they're consistent. Well, early 83. Still, they all seem to be 83. The pins of the CIAs are pretty rusted, so I'm going to apply the fiberglass pen to clean some of the rust off. Okay, let's check on the case again. And it's looking maybe a little lighter. Anyway, let's moisture and everything and reapply the cream and just let the sun do its thing for a few hours. Okay, about 15 minutes went by. I'll just transfer them here and then rinse them well. So much foam, it's hard to even see anything. And after rinsing them and drying them a bit, so overall they look pretty shiny, but you definitely see rust still in there. So I wonder if I should pick out the ones that still have rust and put them back like that one. That one I can put back maybe for another 15 minutes. Because some of them look great like that. Oh, and some of them look a little shorter. I wonder if the rusted part was just so corroded that it fell apart. So this is the batch after the second cleaning. And I don't know. Maybe they're a little bit better. Huh. Some of them continued breaking down like that. Yeah, so I may have to replace completely a couple of springs, which is not bad. I mean, if nothing else, this restored some of them and some of them it showed that they were just not going to hold up much longer. So let's go ahead and make sure that all the chips are working. This is my own Commodore 64, actually. This is the one that came out of that really ugly repair a few weeks ago. That's why just about every chip on here is socketed, so it's going to come in very handy now. We're just going to put the chips from the other one, one by one, into this one and make sure they work. And actually, it's interesting that the revisions of the board are almost identical, or the model is identical. The, they're both fairly early one, 25, 0407, but this is revision A, and this is, you can't see it, but it says revision B in there. This is also says it's made in Hong Kong, and I don't know where this one is made, but the computer was made in Germany, so maybe it was manufactured somewhere else, but um, yeah, I thought it was interesting that they look quite different. The layout is the same, but they look very different. Maybe it's just because this is lighter, but really, Probably the, the traces are identical as well. I like this one, darker one, better. But, okay, let's start testing. This is gonna come in quite handy to make sure the pins go straight in the sockets. Okay, so we start with a bad chip. And that's not too surprising because this is the one that had most corrosion. I'm going to test the other CIA in the same spot. And that's another bad one. Okay, so zero out of two so far. <laughs> Okay, that one is working. So that's not bad at all. The two CIAs, which were the most rusted ones, are not working. 
the ROMs, the CPU, the PLA, the SID, and the VIG2 are working. So that's, I'm really happy with that outcome. <laughs> I've been checking the case throughout the day, but now the sun is gone and it's looking pretty good already. So let's bring it in and give it a good bath and see what we get. So after cleaning it and uh, drying it, well, <laughs> it's lighter than I expected, but it's still looking pretty bad. It's very uneven, the discoloration. And um, it's not just that. If it was the uneven discoloration, and especially around the edges, that's very normal. It got a lot more light here than here. If it was just that, we could put it in a second time and I believe it would restore the original color. Like, you know, this is already the original color. You can see it's pretty much the exact same color. So that's good. So I believe this eventually will go back to the original, but I'm just looking at this and I don't know what this is. <laughs> I really tried scrubbing and it didn't do any good. And I don't think that's just um, yellow in from age. There's something else going on in there. So, yeah, I don't have my hopes up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to retro bright it again today, focusing especially along the edges and the darker areas. If that doesn't look good, then we'll move on to plan B. And here are the keys after spending the day out in the sun with the cream and wow, they look so much better. They're not totally perfect. You can see this is a little wider than this. This has a hint of yellow, but that's totally fine. Um, I don't think that would be noticeable at all. And it's just going to make the Commodore look so much better than those really yellow. I mean, they were almost like dirty brown <laughs> originally. So this is going to be way better. After a second day retro brighting, we got this. So that's more or less what I expected. It's even lighter. So this is definitely now the original color. It might even be a little lighter than the original color, but it's still very uneven. It just looks really dirty having those patches there and having this in here. The edges are still a little better, but still very, very uneven. So really at this point, I'm convinced that no matter what we do as far as retro bright in this case, at best, it's going to be a meh case. So instead of that, I'd rather do something unique. And we're gonna have to stop now. We've come very far, cleaning everything, restoring the keys, testing the individual chips, but we still have a lot left to do. We have to fix those tracks in the back of the board. We obviously need to make sure to get everything working. And of course, we need to turn that case into something very special. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Noel's Retro Lab on Patreon or joining the membership on YouTube. Not only is that the best way to support this channel and allow me to continue making more videos, but you also get some extra perks like early access, ad-free videos, and more. Thank you again to all the supporters. See you next time.